Thank you, Your Honor. With that, we have a uh, presentation for you this evening to try to answer some of the questions that are out there in regards to the uh, Charter Review Committee and some proposed ballot issue language. Um, I will end the presentation with a slide that indicates uh, the purpose of this presentation tonight is to create and fine-tune a document that we can put on our website that will be available uh, in this PowerPoint form for everyone uh, to retrieve at their leisure if they can't uh, listen in tonight to tonight's meeting. Uh, so I would ask you to uh, be patient with me as we have a rather long uh, presentation for you this evening. The first part I'd like to talk about is the Charter Review Committee process itself. Uh, and the charter, the current Kettering City Charter uh, gives the authority for the mayor to carry out various functions and one of them is to appoint the Charter Review Committee, uh, which is made up of our, our citizens. The requirement is that the Charter Review Committee meet at least once every 10 years. Uh, and that is the case uh, in this particular time frame. Uh, our last Charter Review Committee was in 2006. Um, the requirement is to uh, review and recommend changes to city council uh, and give us enough time to do so so that those changes if so decided by city council to appear on the ballot can be uh, at the november ballot as the charter requires the changes uh, to be proposed for a november ballot um, <clears throat> council's responsibility then is to take the recommendations of the charter review committee and decide whether or not they are going to move those changes forward to the ballot. Uh, you did that this evening in first reading uh, by reading the ordinance that would ultimately, if passed, uh, provide us with the necessary uh, documentation and effort to move forward and present to the Board of Elections uh, the ballot language. The Charter Review Committee will stay in place uh, until that November election and then the committee uh, will terminate. Uh, there were some uh, questions about what is required and what is not required. Um, the requirements of the Charter do not require a public announcement of the formation of this committee uh, and nor the open solicitation of potential Charter Review members. Uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the appointment of the Charter Review Committee members also does not have to take place uh, during a Council meeting. This next slide, we talk really about how the Charter Review Committee was formed. Uh, in compliance with the Charter, the Mayor appointed 13 citizens uh, to serve on the Charter Review Committee. Uh, those citizens uh, were uh, well known to the city as a re result of their business, civic, nonprofit, uh, school leadership, and other functions uh, throughout the community. Uh, the members were uh, selected based upon their commitment to our community and their demonstrated uh, skill set. Um, also, their willingness to serve. Obviously, it is a volunteer endeavor. The Charter Review Committee did meet and publicized public meetings. Um, also, the Charter Review Committee met without interference or intervention uh, from council members. Vice Mayor Scott, uh, sitting in for the mayor, sat in on the very first meeting at the very beginning to uh, welcome and thank the members and to set the charge for the requirements of the Charter Review Committee. Uh, and then he left the meeting and there was no council attendance at meetings uh, thereafter. Uh, the meetings were open to the public uh, and the public was invited uh, to observe those meetings. Uh, they were publicized in advance on our city website, our Kettering City calendar, uh, much in the same way as other boards and commission meetings are publicized. Uh, for instance, our Kettering City calendar is posted on our website. It is included in our city council meeting agenda, such as the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, and they are mailed and emailed uh, to members of the public who have requested to receive our agenda uh, on a regular basis. Uh, also here at the South Building, we have a bulletin board where all meeting agendas and minutes are posted. And that includes the Charter Review Committee um, agenda, agendas and meeting notices on that bulletin board. During the uh, meeting of the Charter Review Committee, in which I attended all of those uh, meetings with other members of staff, uh, many items were discussed related to the Charter, including term limits, uh, and ultimately at the end of their meetings, uh, they came together with a recommendation uh, for proposed charter changes that was submitted to City Council by a letter dated May 16, 2016. City Council accepted that letter via resolution uh, at a council at the last council meeting in May. City administration uh, 
determined that the discussion of term limits was critical, uh, not because of any intent to undermine the uh, changes that were made to the Charter in 2012, but because that those changes were significant to the Charter, uh, and we felt that uh, the discussion, or at least the awareness of those changes in 2012 were important. City Council formally received those changes, as I indicated, on May 24th at the Council meeting. Since that uh, formal uh, submission to the Council at that Council meeting, we have received public comment and received, uh, and will continue, I assume, receive public comment during the public comment portion of our Council meeting. We had a Council workshop earlier this evening for the purpose of uh, receiving comments and discussing these proposed uh, changes. Uh, in fact, for the meeting today, uh, we intentionally and directly notified not only the Charter Review Commission, uh, but also the folks uh, who have spoken at recent meetings, as well as uh, the Citizens for a Better Kettering uh, group. Which brings me to uh, the next slide, which is uh, trying to answer some of the questions related uh, to the flyer that was mailed to the residents of Kettering, uh, that yellow flyer you see on the right-hand side uh, of the flyer. Um, so I'd like to address those in a little more detail. Um, and at the top of this slide, uh, you will see the italicized uh, type. That is an exact statement uh, from that flyer. Um, and my response to that statement uh, is that the Charter Review Committee did recommend seven areas of change to the Charter. Uh, most of them, uh, as you know from earlier discussion and I, pertain to changes in definitions, requirements, language, and gender neutrality. Uh, the Charter Review Committee did recommend changes to the term limits. However, at the time of the mailing of the flyer, City Council had not endorsed or approved their recommendation. And as you know from tonight's earlier uh, ordinance reading, it was still an ordinance in first reading. Uh, the official action uh, on this matter would be at our next Council meeting in July. Um, there was a concern in the flyer regarding the allowance of citizens to speak at council meetings until after the votes on ordinances and resolutions. Um, I will say to that, um, in the relationship to ordinances, which are typically read in first and second fashion, uh, there is uh, the ability at the end of a council meeting to discuss an ordinance in first reading. And before the vote in second reading, the mayor asks if there is anyone else in the audience who has new information on that ordinance. In regards to uh, resolutions, uh, yes, uh, it could be interpreted certainly that we do not have a public comment prior to the vote on those resolutions. So as you know, City Council recently induced, introduced a period for public comment uh, regarding pending ordinances, resolutions, and resolutions which takes place prior to any vote. Uh, that would be the section of the agenda tonight where the chairman of the Charter Review Commission spoke before you read the first reading of the ordinance uh, tonight related to uh, the Charter Review Committee. The ballot issue, or the, I'm sorry, the ballot issue mailing uh, did also uh, discuss the pay in excess of $100,000 uh, for city employees and its comparison to other cities. Uh, and we've uh, discussed this at previous council meetings, so I won't uh, go into great detail, but simply to say that we did provide uh, our salary data and have for the last couple of years to the Dayton Daily News, the Dayton, Dur Dayton Business Journal, and anyone else who asked uh, for that information um, for uh, their use. Um, we also provided additional detail related to the number of employees with pay in excess of 100000 uh, and you may recall my discussion of uh, the majority of those are public safety employees um, related to essentially overtime payments that they've received throughout the year uh, because we do have a 24-7 operation obviously in public safety and that while we paid the amount of overtime that caused some employees to make more than $100,000, uh, we did also stay under the salary budget for the year uh, because of the vacancies that result in having overtime paid to our public safety employees. Um, the next issue on the uh, flyer was related to our fire department or our fire station plan um, and the init initial estimates of 18 million with no debt and then finally a plan that was four stations instead of five costing over 34 million uh, with debt as the city borrowed $15.5 million without seeking voter approval. 
I'd like to address that particular comment first by saying that the city uh, does not by uh, its charter and ordinances have to go to the voters for uh, the issuance of debt. Uh, the city council passed an ordinance uh, to approve that debt in December of 2014. Uh, the $18 million estimate in the five-station configuration uh, came from our early uh, versions of the consultant report from Architectural Resources Corporation. Um, then, as we progressed through the review of that report and community meetings and discussions with City Council, um, we amended those estimates to more adequately reflect all of the components of the project. For instance, the $18 million uh, project number was essentially for the construction alone and did not include the ultimate land purchases, design, equipment, and other components of the project. Ultimately, after uh, several workshop meetings and uh, a couple retreat uh, presentations on the topic, uh, we result, the end result was the plan to move forward with full, sorry, four fully staffed operational stations as well as a public safety training facility on Bobby Place. Once we established the total cost of the projects, uh, city administration made a recommendation to city council uh, that we utilize the city's excellent bond rating uh, and the uh, very low interest rates on those bonds uh, to issue debt for approximately one half of the fire station project or 15.5 million. Uh, yes, the project total cost is uh, approximately $30 million at this point. Uh, station number one is open and running. Station, uh, the second station on David Road uh, will be opening later this year. And then uh, we have purchased land uh, for station 34 on Woodman Drive and have issued a contractor in the process of issuing contracts for the contractor on that site. And then uh, we are in the process of securing land for the west side station, which would be the last of the four stations. Um, and we are working on uh, the design uh, proposal for that station. Uh, so can the number change? Will the number change? Yes, we're not done yet. Um, and is the uh, cost of interest related to debt service going to take the project cost in total over 30 million? Yes, uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 34 to 35 million dollars uh, once all of the debt is paid off. Again, the, the interest rates were appealing on that debt issuance, ranging from 1% to 4%. The remainder of the purchase uh, for this project will come from our Emergency Medical Services Fund, uh, and the debt service payments on the debt issuance will be paid from that debt service, or from that Emergency Medical Services Fund as well. There are some proposed ballot language issues that were also uh, submitted to us. I'd like to go over those if I can as well. Um, this slide shows essentially four uh, of those elements. Uh, one of them is uh, present, preventing or prohibiting city council from proposing charter amendments that pertain, pro, <clears throat> excuse me, pertain to term limits, council pay, and citizen ballot initiatives. Uh, those topics will be reserved for citizen initiatives only. Uh, require citizens uh, input to be heard at council meeting before votes on ordinance and resolutions, which I discussed earlier, uh, and we have rectified the situation as it relates to ordinances by changing our agenda. Uh, they also um, want to address the transparency and disclosure of city employee compensation, uh, and again, propose prohibit council from proposing charter amendments on low turnout election balance as a means of uh, undercutting the democratic process. So first, uh, let me go through the Charter Review Committee uh, proposed reforms, and then we'll cover those uh, from the initiative, uh, the ballot initiative. Uh, <clears throat> residency, right now our charter requires uh, residency for the city manager position and all department director positions. Uh, the state law uh, no longer supports that, uh, and so this would remove that from our charter. It would require, remove the requirement that meeting notices be published in a newspaper. Uh, I think Chairman Walls uh, earlier tonight uh, expressed uh, very elegantly why that's important. Uh, what this will do is allow City Council to pass an ordinance that would determine what method we're going to use uh, for uh, publication. Also, we'll be defining the term elector, uh, which uh, 
uh, is a term used in the charter but not defined and the proposal before you from the Charter Review Commission matches the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Board is one of the very few boards that we still have in the charter of its type and this uh, recommended change from the Charter Review Committee would give us flexibility uh, in the number of board members uh, by City Council being able to pass an ordinance to change that number. And then finally, uh, in regards to other boards, Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, the changes recommended will more adequately reflect our current zoning code as well as the current, current operations of those two boards. And then the uh, numerous changes will be made throughout the charter if the recommendation is approved uh, in regards to gender neutrality. In regards to term limits, we have essentially uh, borrowed from the Charter Review Committee's report uh, the paragraphs uh, that they use to define the purpose of uh, their proposal which is to have no term limits moving forward for the mayor and a three term limit for the members of council. Uh, I will not necessarily uh, read those for you as they were read earlier uh, by Chairman Walls uh, in his presentation. The Citizens for a Better Kettering have some proposed uh, charter reforms as well. Uh, and they have submitted uh, petitions, signed petitions uh, to city uh, administration yesterday uh, of a little over 3,000 signatures that were delivered to the Board of Election uh, by our law department this afternoon. The first is the removal and vacancy section of the charter um, and essentially it would remove the ability of the council to appoint someone to a, vac a vacancy um, and that would be um, since there would be no appointment to that vacancy, there would be an election. The election would not take place any sooner than 120 days from the vacancy, and it would not be at a special election, uh, but could be at a, a special election for that sole purpose, but it could be at a, another special election where we add that to the ballot for that special election, uh, or it will be at a primary election or a uh, November election. Uh, obviously, uh, just a very quick cursory review of that and trying, and my interpretation of that uh, is that uh, we could have a significant period of time uh, where a district or an at-large position as well as a mayor position could remain vacant. Uh, there was also a, um, uh, a proposal to change the meetings uh, in the prior consideration uh, of when, it, prior to the consideration of a vote, or of a vote, there be time for the public to comment. And I think I've mentioned uh, several times already this evening um, that while that did not necessarily apply to ordinance, uh, yes, in regards to uh, resolutions, there was not a public comment period and you have changed your agenda to uh, rectify uh, that situation. They also asked for a fair and accurate summary of proceedings um, in regards to many meeting minutes. Uh, we do provide meeting minutes. Um, what a fair and accurate summary is uh, may be a little hard to define at this point, uh, but also in addition to our minutes, our televised meetings such as this meeting uh, are recorded digitally and stored uh, and available on our website. And again, uh, as discussed, there was uh, an amendment that they would prohibit city council uh, to seek or alter or abolish or amend any provision of this charter as it relates to term limitations, term uh, comp compensation of council, or initiative referendum and recall. Um, any proposed amendment to these items um, shall be submitted to the electors of the city only at a general election. Uh, so essentially, as I mentioned earlier, an initiative process would be the only way to move forward with those types of changes to our charter. In regards to transparency, the uh, petition requests that uh, every other year we, the city send out a report that details the highest 15 paid employees uh, in total cost, the median or the middle 15 and the bottom 15, and it include uh, the position and title of such employee, their total wages, uh, and the total monetary value. Um, and then it goes on to define uh, when that report should be issued and how it's issued. Uh, and at this point, uh, the interpretation is it will be transmitted by postal mail to each resident uh, in the city of Kettering that has a registered voter in it. Uh, the anticipated cost of that uh, would be uh, in excess of $10,000 for that mailing. 
Um, and uh, that information, as we mentioned earlier, is available uh, through our submissions to requests at the Dayton Daily News, the Dayton Business Journal, uh, and the Auditor of State as well is uh, preparing, preparing and may already have a database uh, for communities in Ohio. And finally, there is a, uh, the last uh, topic of the petition uh, is talks about an enforcement of the charter provisions and um, if someone were to bring action or bring an item forward, if we were not following the charter and they were successful, uh, there would be an award of cost for litigation expense, attorney fees, uh, and reasonable cons uh, as reasonable constitution compensation for such services. Um, uh, frankly, I just find this a little vague. Uh, there are laws in place uh, in regards to items like this, uh, but in reading this document, it makes me very nervous that a very mundane issue could be brought to our attention. Um, we say, absolutely, we made a mistake, and uh, we didn't. Uh, we haven't followed that issue in that particular case very quickly amend that and follow it and this language would entitle that individual um, uh, to reimbursement of expenses um, as I mentioned uh, at the very beginning of my long presentation uh, uh, the intent of this presentation is to try to answer some of the questions we've been receiving since the Charter Review Committee information made it to City Council in the last meeting of May and the Citizens for a Better Kettering flyer made it uh, to our residents, uh, Kettering residents mailboxes in June. Uh, it's intended that this document will go on our website um, in final form. Uh, we're happy to take any comments or receive any uh, additional data or put additional data on this uh, that you might bring forward. But we'll use this document as an information source and allow people uh, to grab it off our website and, and review it. Your Honor, that's the end of my very long presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Now I think it's uh, <clears throat> now our residents can go and uh, take a look at some of the questions to some of the allegations uh, that were sent out to residents and, 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 and get the whole truth. So uh, thank you for whoever staff put this together. I'm, I know it was a collaboration. Um, thank you for putting this information and, and being able to provide that to our residents. And I think that's probably the most important thing. Uh, on this issue, we're going to get this information out to the people so they can understand what what the, the real answers are uh, to, to some of these uh, items that have been circulating out there. So, thank you.